shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models. In this video, we're going to be putting some metallics through their paste. Okay, so this video is not going to be a review or, you know, a full-blown, crazy, all kinds of different factors experiment. It's going to be kind of, you know, a little bit of both and a little bit of neither. Mainly, I just want to give some different metallics a shot on a larger canvas because I've got some projects coming up where uh, the whole bare metal thing is going to come into play, and so far I've only gotten to use some of these in very limited capacities, and one of them uh, have never used at all. So it'll be fun to put them through their paces and kind of see how they stack up. So let's see what we're going to go with here. First up, we've got some Chrome 61 from K Colors. I've used this stuff before and really, really like it. I think it gives a pretty much one of the best shines out there. And when you combine it with their gloss clear, it does a really good job of actually sealing it and protecting it from lift and all that kind of stuff. While at the same time, not taking too much away from the whole bare metal look. So huge props to this, but I want to see it on a larger canvas, kind of on its own, and see how it does with the contours and curves of a fuselage. Next up, just as a sort of companion piece, I want to try their uh, number 60 steel, which is not chrome, and it, I don't think pretends to have that sort of shine, but I want to see how one of their regular metallics behaves. And this one may actually be coming into play in a jet build pretty soon, so again, just want to give it a shot. Last up, we've got the total wild card of this Gaia Notes Premium Mirror Chrome. Now, Gaia Notes is a very well-regarded lacquer paint brand in Japan, and a whole bunch of their stuff just became available on Spree Brothers, so I'm figuring what the hell, why not give it a shot. This Premium Mirror Chrome is premium as hell. It's actually quite pricey for paint. I think this was like $30 or something but I'm a whore for new kinds of paints to try out, so I figured what the hell, I'll be the guinea pig. Now, for this stuff to be worth the $30 and better than the Chrome 61, it better be really damn good. Uh, but we'll give it a shot. Now for this test, we're gonna be using some spoons. Nah, fuck that, spoons are stupid. We're gonna be using a P47 fuselage. This is the uh, half of a P47N that I am never going to build, and I have gone ahead and hit it with some Tamiya 1500 grit sanding sponge, and then with the cloth buffing wheel on the Dremel, so we've got a nice, smooth, shiny surface. Should take metallics quite well. And in preparation for the metallics, we're going to be laying down some Gunge GX2 black which is a super shiny, wonderful black paint that will prepare the surface nicely for what we have in store. So let's go ahead and get this thing sprayed up. Gunge GX2 is definitely one of those that likes to be hosed on. So hose it on we shall. If you go dry it tends to not do as well. Like some nice wet coat. So when the final paintwork is done, here is the P47 fuselage with the GX2 laid on. As you can see, it's quite reflective. Now it has also been sprayed on very wet, and one of those properties of GX2 is as it cures and dries, it shrinks. And it maintains this reflectivity, but it grabs into the details exceptionally well. So. We're gonna let this cure for a bit and then we'll come back and we'll start playing with some of the metallics. Okay, so the P47 fuselage is at overnight to harden up. And now it's time to spray some metallics. We're gonna start with our K-Colors Chrome 61. 
Okay. Go ahead and do the portion up at the front here. Already taking on a nice sheeny quality. Focus as much sanding and polishing up here. So it's a bit rougher. Let's go ahead. Make sure we're giving it the full treatment. That is a damn fine looking bit of color there. Now, I wouldn't say that this stuff replicates chrome, but if you're going for a good you know, dura aluminum all clad finish before it's gotten all oxidized, I mean, <laughs> hot shit, I love this stuff. Call that good because I have run out of paint. So now we're going to load up the next one. Next up, we're going to be spraying K Color 60 Steel, which I have actually, I don't think I've sprayed this before, so interesting to see how this works. Slightly cooler, darker tone to it. You see it side by side there. I actually might like that one a little bit better. Interesting. Okay, so real quick, before we get into the premium mirror chrome Gaia Note stuff, I went ahead and also shined up a portion of the other fuselage of the P-47 that was used in the flat fight. Now, this is kind of a rough cleanup job, and as you can see here, uh, once the buffing wheel started grabbing the decals, it ripped some of them off and then that turned it into a plastic shredding machine. So, yeah, I mean, this is a half-ass effort, but it's good enough for government work. So what I want to do before we move into the Gaia Note stuff is I want to test these other two K colors, aluminum and XF444 Illuminata, which I'm not really sure the difference. I know that this one is supposed to be like World War II aluminum or something coming from the catalog, but let's see how these go down. Seems a little bit coarser than the others, but that's also probably because the finish on this is a little bit coarser. But that is still looking damn fine. 
one thing I love about these K-Colors metallics is that the pigment is just not even there. So when it goes down, it looks less like fancy silver paint than almost any other metallic I've used. There definitely seems to be a better sense of opacity to this uh, aluminum. I got a little bit left in the tank. Let's see how it does over non-GX2 base. It still works, but it's when it's not polished, it's definitely duller. Something to consider, though, for a uh, slightly oxidized look. But up here, that also looks pretty damn nice. All right, before we move into the Gaia notes, one more K colors to go. Some stuff seems a lot different. Weird. Okay. I don't know if this stuff is turned in the bottle or what, but that is not at all what I'm expecting to see. Yuck. Yeah, that's shitty. So there's something fucked up with this. I'm not quite sure what it is. Whatever it is, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that is, but that does not look like aluminum to me. It's like a dirty silver gray. I really like this other aluminum a lot, though. All right, let's clean out the airbrush. Then we're going to switch airbrushes for the... Gaia notes because it's a lacquer, I believe. Their other stuff's lacquers. Okay, so that was a fun little interlude, and now it's time to bring this guy back and do a little bit of Gaia Note Premium Mirror Chrome. Which, like Mr. Surfacer, has this little insert in the cap that just makes me think I'm gonna splash it everywhere. Always fun getting that shit out. All right. Whoa, this stuff has a uh, has a scent. Okay, so we've got this stuff loaded up and ready to go, and I have no real literature on any sort of considerations to make while spraying it. Uh, in terms of you know, do you build up in light misting coats? Do you hose it on wet? What parameters, etc. So I'm just going to wing it and kind of go with the standard metallic approach of misting coats and gradually building up. One interesting thing, if you look on the back here, you know, not so much the directions which just say use in a well-ventilated area, blah, blah, blah. Look at the contains. Methyl ethyl ketone. Holy shit. This stuff basically has every uh, every harsh thing that we use on models. So methyl ethyl ketone, methyl isobutyl, isobutyl ketone, I'm not exactly sure how that plays in, isopropyl alcohol, blah, 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 tooling, and mineral spirit. So it's like a mix of everything. I don't even know what I would classify this as. Is it a lacquer? Well, it's got isopropyl alcohol and mineral spirits, but it's also got MEK in it. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm just going to hope that this doesn't completely eat the plastic at this point. That is also a damn nice coat. Oh shit. 
I don't know what to make of that. Alright, let me clean this shit up and then we can talk. Now that we're done spraying, I'm planning to go ahead and let the P47 fuselages sit overnight before I go ahead and clear them just to give everything a chance to fully settle down and be happy with its lot in life. So, let's go ahead and do a quick preliminary takeaways. First, we're gonna start with the bonus round of the K-Colors Aluminums. The XF44 Illuminata was terrible, uh, absolutely terrible, but it really does feel like something happened inside the bottle because if you look at you know this is their regular aluminum you can see it floating around in here when you unscrew it you know it's nice and bouncy and thin and all that stuff same goes for their chrome 61 and the steel and all that when you look at the XF444 you don't see that it's solid when you unscrew it, there's this weird buildup around it and it looks very sludgy inside. So it almost feels like, you know, something has turned in there or it's gone bad or it's just a randomly much thicker paint, which doesn't really make sense to me. So yeah, it sucked. However, the number 15 aluminum here I'm a big fan of. I think it's not quite as shiny as some of the others just because the surface isn't as well prepped. Uh, I didn't sand it before I buffed it, I just kind of went in there with the Dremel and the cloth buffing wheel and then did the GX2, but it still has a nice degree of shine and not a lot of visible pigmentation. I mean, you can get in here and yeah, you can see some, but I wonder how much of that is the surface and how much of that is the paint itself. And honestly, this is as good as you would get from all clads airframe aluminum. So, you know, if that's our standard bearer for a nice bare metal, clean, shiny finish, the stuff is pretty damn rock solid. Now, down here, where there was no cleanup, this was just over straight Mr. Paint and a bunch of flats, honestly. Um, it's definitely not as gleamy, but, oh, and <laughs> you can see right there how thick the Great Wall Hobby decals are, they're still showing up, and this one has been hit with all kinds of crazy things. And you're still seeing carrier film. Anyway, you know, it goes down flatter, it's not as shiny, it still looks damn nice. And for a good oxidized finish, maybe putting this stuff over a flatter tone instead of GX2 might be a way to go. But yeah, this is quite solid. Okay, moving on to the main event. We're gonna go from front to back here. So up front, we've got Chrome 61. This is K-Color's shiny, chromey, happy people. And I got some sort of weird frosting in here, which I have not gotten before using K-Color stuff. Uh, it's probably, honestly, my own spray discipline, and I probably came over a wet coat too fast, or I put it down too thick, or something like that. Still, it, you know, even for that, it looks pretty damn cool. And it actually has some nice sort of weathering type of elements going on in it. You now as you get to places where there's not that fogging, if you look sort of up in here, I mean this stuff is hot as shit and while it may not do chrome, it definitely does this whole sort of polished bare metal look quite well. And the one that really blew me away was K Geller 60 steel which is basically from about here back to about here. And this stuff, I mean, the, the specularity on it is just phenomenal. I mean, it's not quite mirror shine, mainly because I think the kit still has some surface going on in it with textures and whatnot, but it's clean. It's cooler in temperature than the chrome up here, which has a slightly warmer, yellower look to it. And I would be thrilled if I were going for a polished you know, say a polished P47, P51, Sabre, something like that, I would be thrilled with this tone. This is just about right. And if you get really close in here, 
it's really hard to see any individual pigments. It's just shiny. And moving on to the Gaia Notes Premium Mirror Chrome. Again, I don't feel it's particularly chromey. I think it's a nice shiny aluminum. Or a nice shiny bare metal. And I don't have any real complaints or anything like that about it. It sprayed down wonderfully. Uh, it looks really good. It's, you know, if you look at it and the, and the uh, K-Color 60, that dividing line is right there. You know, but if you didn't know it, good luck telling those two apart. I mean, they look like the exact same thing from pretty much any angle that you can get to. They look exactly the same. Now, if I have to pick a favorite out of this bunch right now, I'm probably going to go with the K-Color 60 and their 15 aluminum. And those two, in my opinion, pretty much nail what we're looking for in terms of that good natural metal finish for, you know, World War II aircraft or Cold War aircraft, things like that. I also really like the Gaia Note stuff, and I'm curious to see, because I heard that it can be buffed, which makes things even more interesting. Um, and we haven't done the durability test in terms of giving it a clear and then seeing how it handles with tape and things like that, or seeing if the clears, you know, radically alter what these things look like. So far in my experience with K-Colors, uh, the clears on top do not really impact the look at all. so. Yay for that. We'll see what happens with the Gaia Notes. Um, my only hesitation in recommending the Gaia Notes stuff, as good as it is, well, there are two hesitations. As good as it is, it has let's see, just that smorgasbord of chemicals. Just holy shit. I mean, MEK <laughs> going through an airbrush, atomizing that stuff. I mean, I can be kind of flippant about the chemical dangers involved in the hobby, but atomizing MEK is pretty damn intense. And so you want to take your precautions around it. It's also $30 for this little bottle, which is ridiculous. So considering, you know, you look at these two side by side, you can't tell the Gaia Note stuff from the K-Color stuff, get the K-Color stuff. Now the K-Colors are, they say they're acrylic, but they're really alcohol-based, I believe. And that puts them basically in the same category as like, all clads high shines and things like that but the pigments are so pretty much invisible that I mean I've never managed to get all clad looking that sharp and this is just a test piece so that is that uh, I'm gonna pause here and then we're gonna go ahead and do the clear coats tomorrow and test that out but yeah so far so good uh, still really loving where the K colors is at and the Gaia Note stuff is definitely an option for those of you who, you know, like me, are curious to drop ridiculous amounts of money on paint just to see what it's like. So it's just about time to do something I normally don't do this time of year, which is uh, airbrush during the day. But I'm a bit impatient to get some of this stuff wrapped up, and I'm trying to get out here before the uh, before the ambient temperature rises too much to make anything worth doing. So. This morning, I went ahead and gave a shot buffing the Gaia Notes Premium Mirror Chrome. And as you can see in here, you know, if you look at the band of specularity coming off the light, on top of it, sort of where it ends here, it definitely kicks it up another notch. Now, whether or not I like that, I'm not sure. And it starts looking like the uh, you know, kind of shitty plated kits that you see show up every now and then, where it's like, eh, I don't want to build that. But, you know, overall, the fact that you can buff it and you can get it to that kind of a, a level of shine speaks really, really well for, you know, especially smaller scale uses. If you want to use this for mirrors or oleos or things like that, this might actually be a pretty solid option to consider. 
one thing I want to try with this on top of everything else that's happening, because it is a harsh paint made up of many harsh chemicals, maybe it has some better staying power than other metallics. So, right in here is probably a pretty good place to test this. Let's go ahead and furnish this in really, really good. Now, most metallics in this range, if I were to put this tape over here on top of the K colors, it would not lift entirely, but it would definitely pull some metallic away. So, let's give it a shot. No lifting at all. Holy shit. Alright, we're going to try it over on this section. It has not been buffed. In the non-buff section, it is pulling away a tiny little bit. You can see in there, tiny little bit of metallic, but not much. Now it is time to spray us some clear coat. For that, I have got some K Colors X100, which is their super gloss. It's basically uh, similar to all clad aqua gloss, if you're familiar with that stuff. And we've got some Matisse surface tension breaker because acrylics. So all of the surface tension breaker really does is keep an acrylic from beating on the surface because it breaks that tension so you get it a little bit wetter. Okay, we're going to start over here just to make sure that it's spraying the way I want it to spray. Oh yes, okay. Now the K-Colors recommendation for this is essentially a light misted coat and then wait 10 minutes, which seems like a long time. Come back and do some heavier coats. So we've got the mist coat down. Now we're gonna come in here. See, it's not hiding much of the metallic sheen at all. That definitely makes the buffed area show up more, that's for sure. Look at that. Okay, so we're gonna let these two set up for a while and then we're gonna do some tape testing. All right, let's go ahead and finish out this video by doing a bit of durability testing. So for this, we're gonna do two different tests. First of all, we are going to do a good old fashioned tape test. See how these things do with tape lift. there. Uh, the reason I'm doing two different pieces of tape on the Gaia Notes area is because we have the buffed and the unbuffed and as you recall earlier when we did tape test there the unbuffed lifted a little bit and the buff did not. Now that they've got the uh, K colors X100 on top of them. Hopefully nothing should lift. We've also still got the part back here that was not treated with clear. So while the tape sits and it does its thing, we're gonna do the second test, which is the finger smudge test. So we're gonna see what, if anything, we can rub off of these. And see, once the clear is in place, nothing is coming off.
not even a hint of metallic anything in there. And as we move down the line, I'm not seeing anything. Real quick, we're gonna go ahead and test the aluminum. Nope, nothing. All right, now on to testing the tape. Well, over here we did get a tiny, tiny little bit, but it's hard to see any evidence of where it actually was. But if you look on the tape itself, there's a tiny little bit of, uh, of glitter in there. So that's good to know, and that may be a case of me not letting this stuff sit long enough because shut up compressor because I normally like to give it 24 hours and I only gave this uh, less than 12 because I'm impatient but still usually when you get tape lift of that kind of sparkly variety you see a place where it was and I'm not really seeing that here So the Chrome 61, maybe a hint, but I don't see much at all. Certainly a lot more resistant than you would expect with uh, a Chrome based on other ones in the past. And I'm seeing a tiny, tiny little bit of glitter on this one, but nothing substantial and it's not leaving any obvious sign of where the masking was, so if that's what it gives up, I'm willing to live with that. It's more when you do the tape and then you look and you see a big rectangle where the tape was. That's what we're trying to avoid. So far, all these are avoiding them quite nicely. Gaia notes, nothing. So this time out, it was clear. And I have no reason to expect that there's any kind of lift of any kind over here. Yep, nothing there either. I'm not sure what the hell's going on with that little dark spot there. So there's nothing corresponding in the tape. So maybe that was a thing with the buffing that I missed earlier, but worth noting. Okay, so in the final analysis, Basically all of these performed well except for the XF444 which can find its happy life in the bottom of my trash can. The 15 aluminum did fantastically well and still looks all nice and shiny. 61 chrome, the 60 steel, and the Gaia notes all did nice. This ability to buff the Gaia notes is fascinating and I think has its own potential uses. As you can see once you put a clear on top of it, this K color is clear right in here. It seems to have a different tone to it than the regular polished section that you see back here. So that gives some interesting possibilities for variation and tonality. But generally, I think any of these is a good option. Uh, K colors is nice because it is not so much healthy, but it is not stacked with things like MEK that you're spraying into the, into the uh, atmosphere around you. It is basically alcohol. So if you're comfortable spraying, you know, Tamiya thinned with IPA, you're looking at something probably in the same ballpark. It also goes down well, is nice and forgiving. And again, with the X100 clear coat on top, that doesn't really diminish its shine or metallic look at all. Uh, it holds up quite well to handling of any kind, whether it's finger scuffing or tape marks. So from that, yeah, uh, lots of fun stuff to play with and I'm looking forward to embarking on a bare metal aircraft at some point here, hopefully in the near future. So thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, check you later.